Good morning, International Christian Fellowship Online. Pastor Jennifer here saying welcome to the service. Thank you so much for being a part of what we're doing. Um, as you enter into praise and worship, I want you to stand up if you can. I want you to raise your hands. So excited to have our daughter, Jessica, and her friends from the Bridge Church who help lead our worship sets online. Today, I know you're going to be especially blessed. I've listened to it already. It is amazing. The Holy Spirit uses that music to make our hearts ready for the message because God is calling each of us to make new commitments and to walk in new, stronger ways than we've ever done before. He's faithful and let this worship just be fuel for your spirit as you open your heart for what God has for you today. Let's worship together. Hello, ICF family. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've got some great announcements for you today. First up is Kids Camp. We're so excited to be doing it on campus this year. It's going to be July 5th through the 9th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's going to, Doors will open at 945. You can register online, and if you want to help and volunteer, you can register at that link as well. And we also, on Saturdays, have music and media rehearsals from 4 to 6. And if you want to just check it out, you are more than welcome to come. Also, as a reminder, every week at 12, we have Women's Thursday Connect. That's on Facebook Live. You can read more about all our events coming up and register at icfrome.org. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Let's worship together. Good morning, church. Will you stand with us this morning? How many of you know that the battle is not yours? That God has already fought his battle for you? And he is victorious. I march into battle, no doubt in my mind that my God is with me and victory is mine. I'll dance in the shadow of my enemy cause God is my champion and he fights for me. Oh, God is my champion and he fights for me. Stronger than ten thousand armies. You're stronger than ten. 
so good to be a child of God this morning. God, we worship you. We thank you for choosing us, Jesus. Sing you're chosen. Even if you don't feel chosen this morning, it doesn't matter. You are proclaiming. Let's sing. I am chosen, not forsaken. Believe it. I am who you say I am. You know you are for me, not against me. I am who you say. Chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for This is Pastor Jennifer Pasquale coming to you from the International Christian Fellowship of Rome. I want to welcome you to our service wherever you're watching from today. I believe the Lord brought our past together for such a time as this. Today, a message for you. So lean in and hear what the Lord has to say in this service. God bless you. Good morning, ICF Rome family, online, on campus. Pastor Jennifer here, and I am so excited to start this month with our new theme of the month, Ready for Adventure. I want to say a very big thank you to all of our ICF Rome ministry team captains and leaders of ministries that have really stepped up during this season. I could just look and point in the audience there, Jackie and Bose and Helen and in the sound booth and the media and over in the children's, uh, Cherry and Alex and all of your teams online and kids ministry and the teenagers. I saw the, the picture of the class last week. Listen, if you're ready for the call, then you are ready for adventure. But I mean it from the bottom of our heart to you right there in Rome and those that are watching online. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The ministry of ICF Rome is a team effort. And so I am just so thankful for the team of quality, faith-filled, empowered by the Holy Spirit, leaders and team captains that we have and I want to say to those of you here in Rome that are sitting here in the church today, or maybe even joining online, as many do before they move to Rome, that we say, if you don't have a home church while you're in Rome, welcome to the family. If you don't have a home church where you are, welcome to the online family. We have Wednesday night prayer online and Thursday morning connect. And there are lots of ways for you to get involved. I know the Ministry Expo was fantastic last weekend. If you missed it, you can still sign up. There's a link online for all of that amazing opportunity. Because when you connect and serve and follow the call of God on your life, not only do you bless those that you serve with, but you grow in God's calling and purposes for your life. So thankful for Joel and Alex who preached a powerful tag team message, and Jackie, who wrapped it up in a powerful time of prayer on being ready for the call. Pastor Becca Jones from Milano that preached last week that final call to action of ready for the call. So today, 
as you know, we have a verse of the year and we have a verse of the month. And I felt empowered. The Holy Spirit gave me these thoughts to give to you, to lay the foundation for this month on what it means to be on the adventure with Jesus Christ for your whole life. From this moment forward, no matter when you started, choose today to be on the adventure, the ride of your life, I'm calling it, the ride of your life. If you've ever ridden in uh, traffic in Rome, that might be like the ride of your life. If you've ever ridden on a cable car going across a mountain or a, a big uh, open gully area, that might be the ride of your life. If you've ever ridden in a minivan with your babies and your toddlers, that might be the ride of your life. <laughs> so I can hear you laughing, joining with me. Um, but I want us to think about what is this adventure that God wants us to be ready for? So Father, I just invite you once again to anoint the words of scripture, to anoint the ministry of the word presented, to open the hearts and the minds of the hearers that not only would we receive it into our heart and our mind, but we would take it and run with action the God adventure that you have each of us on. And if we don't know, may we remember that you have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And part of the adventure is discovering new aspects every week. So Father, bless the hearers, bless the speaker, and um, just do what you're going to do, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Now you can see I'm not like with the brick wall and the cross behind me, but I am in a place where I know the power of God has resided, has lived, has dwelled. And I have been studying and meditating on scriptures about this right of the life. So let's look at our verse for the month. It says in Psalm 1611, you make known to me the path of life. You, that's meaning God, make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That describes the adventure. And then the clock is chiming to remind us that the adventure with God is timely. When I think about the path of life, that the fullness of joy and the pleasures forevermore, that is what I think of when I think of adventure. But when I think about being ready, I want to remind us all, it's not God get ready for me, I'm gonna do my thing. It's me, you, being ready for God to do his thing. And that might not look like what we thought it was gonna look like. So I want you to know that wherever you're standing today, if you are God's child, you're standing on holy ground. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, and he will make known to us the path of life and give us fullness of joy. So when we remember that we're ready for the call, when we remember that God's purposes and God's plans are under full warranty for our lives, never canceled, no matter what, if you're watching online, type in the chat, no matter what, I'm with God. If you're in the audience today, tell somebody, no matter what, no matter what. So if we are ready for his purposes, we are ready for the God adventure. I'm going to break down this month's scripture verse because I want to establish the foundation for the month series. And you, we may have different ones who share in the next coming weeks, but I want you to understand something. The God adventure means that God's in charge. He's, uh, he's not the co-pilot. He is the pilot. He's not just somebody, but passenger on the adventure. He is the adventure himself. Walking with Jesus is the adventure of life. So what did David say in Psalm 16? Look back with me a little bit at 7, verse 7 through 11 in the Passion Translation. David says to God, the way you counsel me makes me praise you more. Type in the chat, praise you more. That's point number one. Tell somebody, I'm going to praise God more. 
Come on, back over here by the sound booth. Say, I'm going to praise God more. For your whispers in the night give me wisdom, showing me what to do next. See, the adventure is not without instruction. I want to say that again. The adventure is not without instruction. The Lord whispers in the night, showing us what to do next. Verse 8, because I tell you, I have set you, Yahweh, always close to me, my confidence will never be weakened. That is a promise from God. My confidence in God will never be weakened, no matter what comes my way. For I experience your wraparound presence every moment. I can tell you, over my life, you know my story of losing my mother when I was 15, of Pastor Rick's struggles in his uh, physical body several years ago, and now, you know, losing our mom again in this moment. Having that wraparound presence of God in every moment means that my confidence in the God of my adventure is never weakened. My heart and my soul, verse 9, explode with joy, full of glory. Even my body will rest confident and secure. For you will not abandon me to the realm of death, nor will you allow your faithful one to experience corruption. Verse 11, because of you, I know the path of life. So I taste the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right side, I experience divine pleasures. This adventure is about divine pleasure, not earthly pleasures, not worldly pleasures. Those things will fade away and leave you empty. But when you are full of the Holy Spirit's power, when you are ready to run with strength and courage, the race that is set before you, you will know the experience of divine pleasure in God. It's true. It's real. It's tangible. Now, as we look at David, the author of Psalms, he's just one of many characters in the Bible who truly encountered some incredible adventure stories in the Bible, because the Bible is God's holy word, written and inspired by the Holy Spirit of holy men and women who are in the Bible. So I want you to understand something. Don't tell me that life with God is boring and mundane, because I can tell you it's not boring. You never know what to expect. Far from it. It is the ride of your life. Look at somebody and say, I'm ready for the ride of my life. Tell me, I'm ready for the ride of my life. Type it in the chat online. I'm ready for the ride of my life. I'm ready for the God adventure. So today I've got four points for us. And the first one that I want you to have in your heart about this God adventure, this adventure with God, not an adventure that God is with with you, but it's an adventure with God on God's path, divine. The adventure will make you praise him more. The Bible says that praise is our weapon to bring the adventures of battle into the awesomeness of victory. We see it many times in scripture where God commanded them to shout a voice of praise or march around the city seven times and declare the word of the Lord in praise and then give a shout. Joshua faced this mighty army and barriers and walls literally fell down as Joshua led his teammates to praise God and march around the city and shout. So here's what I'm saying to you, my teammates, both on campus and online. Let's shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Let's enter into his gates with praise and thanksgiving. I mean, Paul realized the praise factor when he wrote in the book of Colossians, the word of God cannot be chained. You know, Paul wrote that right here in Rome. I've stood and sat in that prison cell where Paul was writing. And in Colossians 1, 10 through 12, it says, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him 
in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God and being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have a great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the holy people in the kingdom of light. If we will praise God more, no matter what the adventure looks like, it may look scary, it may look unknown, it may look like I'm not qualified, but what does it say? That he will qualify you to share in the inheritance of the holy people. What is that inheritance? Those divine pleasures forevermore. Praise him more. When you're down and discouraged, praise him more. When you haven't felt good in a few days, praise him more. Wake up and say, good morning, Holy Spirit, I praise you. Good morning, Jesus, I praise you. Good morning, Lord, this is your day and I am thankful for it. That is what will give you the adventure ride of your life. Point number two says confidence attached to God will never be weakened. Now, there are times when we pray and it doesn't seem like God answered the way we thought he might. We feel uncertain. But one thing I have learned is that I know the voice of the Lord. You know, I read to you in that passage in Psalms where it says he whispers wisdom in the night. I have felt the Holy Spirit whisper wisdom and words of knowledge and discernment to me because my confidence is attached to God. And therefore, when I am weak, he is made strong. And that adventure keeps my confidence in him strong and active. If it was in me or if it was in yourself, you may just fall asleep and lose it. Lose your confidence, lose it. It won't be, it'll be inactive. But when you have to hold on to the power and the strength and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we use it often on Wednesday night, the, uh, the spirit of the sovereign Lord descends upon us and he gives us the ability to see victory in every circumstance. And I praise God for that. Let me tell you about a few more people who knew what it meant to have a confidence attached to God in the middle of their adventures. Esther knew God was with her. Her people were depending on her and there were other people working against her, but she never wavered in her adventure assignment. I can tell you that whether my feet are standing on the platform or they're standing on the online campus, my commitment to the God adventure and the God assignment there in Rome, Italy, here with ICF Rome family members and participants online, Pastor Rick's um, commitment to that God adventure like Esther, we never waver in that adventure assignment. And so sometimes God says, okay, I want you to pause. I want you to go this way a little bit. And then I want you to go that way. Then I want you to hold steady for a minute. And we've all been holding steady for like a year and a half with COVID. And uh, now the restaurants are opening up and I see people are out doing some little uh, touring week weekday things. That's awesome. But Esther never wavered in her adventure assignment. Let's think about Noah. Noah knew God had spoken to him. He was going to build a boat for people who had never seen rain. But he never wavered in his adventure confidence with God. You see, when God gives us an assignment and we're ready for the call, the adventure is in full force. And when we're not sure, like, wow, that kind of was unexpected, we need to look at those people in the Bible that God wanted us to know about that never wavered in their adventure assignments. I'm sure there was a lot of people saying to know what are you doing and why are you doing it? It doesn't make any sense. But Noah said, I'm obeying God and I'm going to keep obeying God. And so sometimes when you follow God, Somebody might say, oh, you could have had this advancement or this thing. And you're saying, you know what? I know I'm supposed to be here at this point in time. Think about David. David faced his giants of adventure with confidence. 
And he told the giant in 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at verse 34. And I want you to go back and look at it through verse 50. But, you know, the giant's like, who do you think you are? You're, and why are you sending me this scrawny little kid out here to fight me? And David said, you may come at me like you think you're all that, but I come at you in the name of my God. David had a confidence in the adventure experience that God had put on his, on his life. And I want you to listen to this because being on the adventure, the, the confidence is not in ourselves. The confidence is not in our own abilities. The confidence, the reason why the confidence never wavers is because the confidence is in God Almighty, omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, all-powerful. In verse, first Samuel 17, 58, David's adventure did not cause him to forget who he was or where he came from. When asked, whose are you? He didn't say, oh, I'm the son who is a giant killer. I'm the shepherd boy who's killed a lion and a bear and a giant. No, he answered, I'm the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. His confidence was in God not in his own ability. And he did not pat himself on the back and say, I'm the giant killer, I'm the lion killer. He said, I'm the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. And what you need to know is that lineage would lead to the birth of Jesus Christ, our savior and redeemer. He was not weakened by his own victory. He had confidence in the victory assignment that God had on him. Point three, explode with joy. I call this the wow factor. Explode with joy, the wow factor. You should see that on the screen. Now I was gonna say like W-H-E-W, but that's too hard to like keep saying over and over. So I'm gonna use wow, but like that moment when you're doing some kind of adventure and some kind of crazy assignment and all of a sudden you're looking around and you're trying to figure out and it's all finally finished and you were successful and you finished your adventure and you go, <laughs> hallelujah, I made it. I did it. God did it in me. That is the wow factor that we can explode with joy and say, there may have been some weeping in the night, but joy comes in the morning and we can explode with joy. Adventures give you moments of great joy inside your soul. And I will tell you, I've learned this. You laugh when the enemy is defeated and victory prevails. How many times the enemy has tried to come against us, against me, against you, against our loved ones, and thought that he was going to get the victory, the enemy of our soul. And then something, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord falls down and rests upon those that we've prayed for. And we sense there is a powerful anointing of the Lord and the enemy is the loser. Remember, the battle is the Lord's and we get to experience the victory. The battle is the Lord's. And so we can truly explode with joy because our confidence is in the joy giver. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When we've all had that scary, unknown adventure with our papers, our people, and our purposes. For example, I shared with some that we recently lost a couple passports and uh, that was an adventure to try to find them. And when we finally found them, it was like the Lord reminded me, you will never lose your identity documents when you stay on the adventure with God. It's just a piece of paper with your picture on it. And it may be valuable, but there is something written in heaven with my name on it that is more valuable, more powerful. It is the wow factor. I can tell you a few more people in the Bible who knew that wow factor because their adventures were not easy. They were difficult. Daniel knew the wow factor when he faced the lions and witnessed the deliverance of God. Now, when we talk about adventure, we may think, oh, that sounds exciting. Or I can tell you, I, I'm sure it wasn't too exciting to be in that den of lions, wondering what in the world is going to happen. And God 
delivered. Those boys that were thrown into that fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they saw even the soldiers that tried to throw them in burn up and die. But there was a fourth man in that fiery adventure, and he got them out of that adventure without even the smell of smoke upon them. Daniel knew that wow factor. Jonah Jonah knew the wow factor. You may have heard Pastor Rick last month preach about there's a fish for you. Jonah knew the wow factor when he finally said, okay, 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 God, I'll obey you. And God literally had that whale spew him out of his belly onto the seashore. That is an adventure. And in case you were wondering, could that really be true? I recently saw a documentary where a whale had literally swallowed a diver and spit him back out. Now, I don't need to prove God's word. God himself proves himself every day to me. But it's very exciting when you see stories in the Bible and then you see that this is still happening. These are real and relevant things that God Adventure Manual, called the Holy Bible, teaches us how to follow God and how to explode with joy. Think about Moses. We always hear about Moses and the children of Israel and getting out of Egypt. And, but Moses as a baby in a basket floating on a river, don't you think that was an adventure for that baby? Don't you think that was an adventure for that mother and that sister who had to let go and see what God was going to do with that baby in a basket when they let go of that child? You may have a child. You may have a loved one that you have to let go and watch what God's gonna do in their lives. But think about this. There were crowds of people around Moses when he was a leader, and I'm sure they were questioning him. And God shows up in the middle of them saying, great, you got us out of there, now we're right here at the Red Sea. Moses, you have lost it. Mm -mm. God shows up at just the right time and parts the sea. That's a wow factor. That is a wow factor. Now listen, I've heard lots of stories about that parting of the Red Sea and how they walked across on dry land. So whether it was a full Red Sea and God parted that sea, or rather there was a, a dry riverbed, but then a little bit of water swallowed up the Egyptians. Either way you look at it, that was a wow factor. Now maybe you never thought about that before. Read your Bible. See what God is doing in the adventures. His very name, Moses, means, I drew you out of the water, Exodus 2.10. His name was about adventure. I drew you out of the water. So I want you to know, like Pastor Becca said last week, and we, we said all month, is that God has a plan and a purpose, and he has given you a name, a new name written down in glory when you accept Jesus as Lord and if your life has been full of lions and bears and giants and feeling swallowed by the sea and wilderness, and what am I doing here now or why am I here? I want you to understand something. You need to explode with joy. When you do that, when you praise him more, you will see that he is faithful. This is an adventure ride he is going to give you. And when it's all done, you're going to say, wow, Whew. wow, this is an amazing adventure. And finally, point four, adventure tastes like joy in the presence of God. When you're not in the presence of God, it may be sour. It may not taste good. It may feel uncertain. But when you are in the presence of God, and the Bible says he's as close as the mention of his name. Can somebody say amen? Can you say Jesus? Say that with me. Jesus. Type Jesus in the chat. Jesus. I can have the presence of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit by saying one word. Jesus. Moses experienced the power and joy in the presence of God at a burning bush experience. Gideon, the Bible says that Gideon in Judges chapter 6 verse 12, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you. You are a mighty man of valor. 
Wow, that is an adventure. Mary knew the joy of his presence as she knelt at his feet. But I also can imagine that those 5,000 people who got a full and free lunch out of five loaves and two fish, they knew the joy of his presence. They were so glad he was their provider. Peter knew the joy of being in the presence of Jesus when he realized that God had forgiven him through what Jesus did on the cross and his purposes and his calling for ministry began to explode. And the very first time he shares, you know, about what God is and what Jesus is, 3,000 people get saved. That's a wow factor in any day, but especially in that day. The power of the Holy Spirit. The people in the upper room knew the wow factor when the power of the Holy Spirit fell. Can you imagine saying, okay, now just stay here in this room, here in ICF room. Don't move. Don't go out. Don't do anything. Just wait until you feel the presence of the Lord. Now, right now, we're still for a little bit longer on those one-hour time limits and some social distancing restriction. But there is coming a day in the next few weeks where we're going to be able to linger in the presence of the Lord. And I want you to understand that when you are in the presence of the Lord, that is the adventure that gives you a wow factor. Can we take just a minute? Will you lift your hands wherever you are? Will you lift your hands right now with me in the sanctuary across the way? Will you just lift your hands? Let's just say, Lord Jesus, I invite your presence to be in charge of the ride of my life. God, you are amazing. You are powerful. You know my heart. You know the journeys that I'm facing. And God, we say, wow, in your presence. Lord, let your presence saturate every person right now. In Jesus' name. You see, I'm not just talking to you as a pastor or a minister or a missionary. I've known the joy of his presence, literally, in the midst of pain. I've experienced the confidence that did not weaken in the midst of panic and pandemic and pandemonium. And you know what? When you reframe it, there is fullness of joy when you trust the one who is seated at the right hand of God, making intercession on your behalf. That's in our scripture verse for this month. Pleasures at the right hand forevermore. That is who Jesus is, at the right hand of God, speaking and making intercession for you and I. Psalm 1611 says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. He has made you ready for the adventure that he has you on right here, right now, in this moment, in this circumstance in your life. And you will know the fullness of joy in the middle of the mountain climbing adventure. He has made you ready. I want to say to you, don't stop. Don't weaken. Don't get off the ride. Don't go backwards. Don't quit, but persevere for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So this morning, as I close us out in prayer, we're going to be serving communion and we're going to have communion online. Pastor Rick will lead us in that as well. But here in the church, Jackie will come and this, they will help provide the communion. But as you take that cup and that bread today and you remember Jesus and the sacrifices he made, I want you to know that you can praise him in the middle of the adventure. That he has a purpose for you today, now, this week, this month. Hang on, but do it with great explosive joy. It's not fake, it's faith. I'm going to say that again. It's not fake, it's faith. And it's obedience to the scripture that says, I will have fullness of joy as I stand in the presence of Jesus. 
We may have some surprises, some unexpected turns. That's what adventure is. If you've ever ridden a roller coaster, it goes up and down and around and upside down and you don't know which way is which. But on the adventure of life, you will have surprises that will be packed with the promises of God like Psalm 1611. He'll make known to you the path of life. And in his presence, there will be fullness of joy. In his presence, there will be everything that you need. That when he whispers in the night, that's part of the adventure. When he speaks to you at your bedside or your chair, as you're riding on the bus, on the metro, hear the voice of the Lord saying to you, I will make known to you every step you're going to take on this adventure. And I'm telling you, this is the time. This is an uh, exciting season. People are ready to come back alive and do things after being locked down for so many months. And I don't, don't miss God. Don't set God on a shelf because now you can go out of town for a couple days. Invite Jesus to be in charge. Go on the God adventure. I'm not on a Jen adventure. I'm not on a Rick adventure. I've been on a God adventure since I was probably seven years old when I invited Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I've been on that God adventure since 15 when I invited the Holy Spirit to comfort me and rebuke the lies of the enemy about my mother's loss. I've been on an adventure when I didn't know where my lost daughter was and what was happening. But I began to praise God in the presence of everything else. And my confidence in God did not weaken. And I will tell you, even now, there have been times when someone else is holding up my arms, holding up our arms, praying with us because you are not on the adventure alone. And God wants you to remember that you will explode with joy when you just say Jesus. So, Father, as we recognize the Lord's Supper in remembrance of all that you did to heal our bodies, to restore our hearts, to touch our lives and redeem our purposes. Lord, today, let your people know you make known to me the path of life. And this adventure is the ride of life that I will never stop riding on for God. So, Lord, today, I pray. I pray that that young lady sitting towards the back, that she will know that she's in this building for such a time as this. I pray for that couple watching online that has felt uncertain about this season. Is all the adventure and the fun over with? No, it's not. God has something new. God has something amazing. You are on the adventure and you're not getting off. If you think about it here in Rome, friends, and all our online buddies and friends and churches and congregations that gather you know here's a moment where the body of Christ comes together and focuses upon what Christ did for each of us the Bible says for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Wow. See, when we participate in communion, we are remembering. It's a remembrance. When we think about the cross... It's one of those moments that we don't just think about it when it's time to receive communion. But for some, it's a, let me think again. Let me go a little bit deeper with my thought. Because as we look at a cross, we see the symbolism that is represented we know our God is not still on that cross we know that he's not there for the Bible says he is risen and I want you to know that as you partake in communion today 
you are remembering what Jesus did for you. What Jesus did for your family. What Jesus did for the world. It's easy to remember because he paid such a supreme sacrifice for God so loved the world. That's you, my online friends. That's you, our friends here in Rome. For God so loved you. When I think about grace and I think about mercy, it's all taken care of when I think about the cross. Because I know who the God that sent his son to die on a cross has to be gracious. The God that sent his only begotten son, he's got to be loving. He's got to be caring. So all those attributes that you feel are worthy, as our worshipers sang today, he's worthy of it all. He didn't just say he would do something he acted upon it. So when we take this bread and we hold it in our hand, hopefully you're joining us, our online churches and our online friends. You hold that in your hand, you're doing something that's so important. took the bread and when he broke it he said this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me Lord Jesus today the body is so symbolic of those stripes that were taken upon your back you were wounded for our transgressions you were bruised for our iniquities the chastisement or peace was upon you and by your stripes we are healed so Lord for everyone that needs a healing in their body mind, soul or spirit may they be healed in Jesus name Amen Can we eat of the bread together, please? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the same way, after supper, He took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance that word again we're remembering the blood the blood that cleanses us the blood that washes away all our sins the Bible says prior to that the man's to examine themselves the woman's to examine themselves and then eat and drink So maybe here's your moment to look at your life and say, Oh Lord, please pardon me. Please forgive me. So Lord, we know that you are the only person that can forgive my sin. So Lord, we ask again today for forgiveness. Search us, O God, is what the Scripture says. O Lord, I know. Search me. And if you find anything, forgive me. Forgive us. Lord, wherever someone is asking you this moment, will you pardon them? Will you cleanse them? Will you forgive them? Thank you, Lord. Together, please. How 
Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be your name, O Lord. Thank you so much for listening today. As you have heard this message, I believe God has spoken to your life. Today, the best decision you can make is to follow Christ, to say yes to him. And if you want to say that prayer with me, I'd love to pray with you right now. So I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say it, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. From this day forward, for the rest of my life, I will live for you. The things I was doing that were sin, I won't do anymore because you've just changed my life. And I thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you just said that prayer, that's the best prayer you've ever prayed. And I can tell you that God's got great plans for your life. In a moment, there'll be some information that you'll see online that you can follow up because we're, the relationship doesn't stop now. We've started a relationship where we're gonna help you on this journey with Christ. But maybe you've listened to this prayer today and now you're saying, man, I got another need. Or maybe you've already given your life to Christ and you say, I need a miracle. Well, this pastor, this church believes in miracle. And so I wanna pray a prayer for you right now that God will do a miracle for you. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for my friends that have listened today. God, there's nothing too big for you. You said we can ask anything according to your will and you hear us. And Lord, when you hear us, you respond to us. And Lord, right now there are people that are praying prayers all over the world and they're asking you for a miracle. So God, no matter what it is, I pray right now, you will touch them, you will answer their prayer, and a miracle will happen for them as we pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, I can tell you, I can't wait to hear the results of that prayer. So if you just send us a note, the information will be there right after you see this video, and you can say, I wanna send that guy a note to tell him what God has done for my life. We love you. And remember, God's got a plan for your life. Hey, wow, what an amazing service. Welcome to our virtual foyer. And if you were in the church, I would be shaking your hand or giving you an elbow bump saying, we're so glad you came. And I want you to know that we are so glad you are participating online. I want you to know that we're paying attention. We know that you're there. We know that you have needs, and we've been praying for you. We've been praying for our online um, congregation. And so today, as you go out into the world after this service, I want you to go out in victory. I want you to know that Pastor Rick and I love you so much. And uh, when you can, we want you to come back into the campus and join with us here in Rome. But I also want you to know as you embrace the week, in this virtual four-year farewell for the day, I want you to walk out saying, yes, Lord, I am ready, ready for the call, ready for whatever opportunities God puts ahead of me. And I'm praying for you for that job interview. I'm praying for you with your family and your children. God knows what you need, and you're going to see his answers to prayers unfolding this week. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.